They got what? Starboy. Why don't they just have a hose? Because they can't wipe their ass, so they need somebody to wipe their ass for them. <laughs> they need two guys to separate it <laughs> and one guy to hose it down. Doll boys and sumo wrestling? Yeah, really. Look it up. <laughs> what made Baba. you become a comedian? I used to get bullied a lot when I was a kid. Up until I was about 15, then I started boxing. Then I never got bullied, but I wasn't that good at boxing. But I loved being in the gym, you know what I mean? So I was around all the fighters all the time, but I would be the guy in the gym talking shit to everybody. <laughs> and I would and that was my <laughs> game. <clears throat> when I was sparring with guys, there was a guy in my gym who you couldn't hit. Willie, you just couldn't hit him. You know those guys, you throw the punch, you know they're the right there, but you throw the punch and they move half an inch so that they're not in the... Oh, I've seen them before. I hate them guys. <laughs> So I would throw a punch. He would be, I'm like, fuck. So I would step in and clinch. And then I would tell him shit like, fuck, you smell so good. And he'd be like, hey, get off. And then as soon as he was like, whack, I would get one off on him. But that was it. And that was the only time. And I would throw elbows on him and shit. But I'm like, fuck it. That was my only way of getting his shots at that point. I love that. But there was like guys that were real fighters in the gym. And I was just a guy learning how to box. And so I was like, all right, well. I clearly I have some sort of talent with making people laugh here. And I was DJing, and I love DJing, and I still DJ, but comedy just kind of fell in my lap. It's just what I did, you know. Lennox and I were amateurs at the same time. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because I remember when he was, uh, when he went sparred with you in 80, 84. 84, 83. Eight, up in the Catskills, yeah, when he was getting you ready for the Empire State Games, or was it the Olympics? One or the other. Olympic trial. Yeah. Wow, dude, that's pretty cool. You were sparring with Lennox back then. Yeah, Lennox told me, he goes, that kid, he goes, they never told me about that kid when I got there. Because he goes, I met him and he was so nice. Mike was just so nice and friendly and like, hey, thanks for coming up. And he was like, oh man, this kid's great. And he gets in the ring and he goes, what the fuck was that? Because <laughs> this tornado came at me. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, dude. What, um, as a DJ, did you ever throw out jokes where you work, work no, on when, your comedy in between when I used to, When I used to make mixtapes in the early 90s, I would take a, because you used to do vinyl back then, so I used to take a George Carlin record and start with like a George Carlin joke and then mix oh, a song in after it. I love that. Yeah, so I think one of them was like, uh, anybody could have bad breath, Marge, but you could knock a buzzard off a shit wagon and then I would start the song. And then I'd be like, jam. Just, little, just little clips like that and I would use Richard Pryor records or whatever. I would just, just a little clip and then drop the music in. That was like my signature. And then, I, and then after I ran out of comedy records to use, I would use acapellas and then mix a beat in underneath it and stuff like that. That's pretty bitch. But I still make my mixtapes. I still make them. I make my, maybe three a year now. I want to hear one of those. Yeah, it's only old school. So if you want old school, Who's I got you. Who's your favorite rapper? Of all time? Mm -hmm. All time would be Biggie. Yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. Nice. But, uh, and Big L. I like MCs, MCs. Like guys that could really spit. Yeah. And have you heard Eminem's new album? I hear his new album. Oh my God. That shit is ridiculous. Fire? Oh my God. Yeah. He really fucking goes in. Yeah. And it's dope. Like, he takes the flow that the kids use now, and he just uses it against them. Yeah. Like, he does it like them, but better than them. Like, everything, it's, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, he says, do you have any idea how much I hate this choppy flow, but you be copying the blah, 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 and then he just keeps rapping like that the whole time, but you're like, holy fuck, he's really going in on these kids. I love And that. he just makes fun of them, you know, that Gucci gang shit. Yeah, yeah. He starts going to... So he's talking about like somebody told me he should update his flow. And he's like, all right, here we go. Um, Pootie Tang, Chicken Wing, <laughs> Charlemagne ain't a thing. It just keeps making like one of these ridiculous things like just to show you how fucking stupid what they're doing is. It's so that. good. That's awesome. Well, there's a whole <clears throat> thing. Uh, have you ever listened to the Joe Budden podcast? <laughs> well, him and he goes in on Joe Budden too. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He, <clears throat> he said the only, the closest thing you had to having hits is smacking bitches. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, it was just interesting on that point of old school versus these new guys. Well, I mean, I the, get it. Like, yeah. like it's everything's got to change. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the new evolves. stuff is not for us old guys. I mean, yeah. that's just not the way it's designed. I mean, music is, even when we were kids, the stuff was designed for people our age at that time. And now we grew up with it, so it's all our memories. But, right. But every now and then, one of these kids might say something that makes you go, oh, okay, he can do it. Yeah. You know, but yeah. it's, you know, for us, it's rare. It's kind of like our parents would complain about our yeah. music and, and their parents would complain about their music, you know, and 
people complained about Elvis when he came out. You know, now, hey, 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 man. Yeah, you know, no. I know, I know. That's why I looked at you when I said it. <laughs> Bye -bye. <laughs> Let me tell you a funny story about Chuck Zito. Uh, Please. <clears throat> Chuck and I are we're very, we're, we're like brothers. So Chuck's, Chuck, uh, Chuck and I have a house in Vegas together. I like to say <laughs> Chuck and I have a house in Vegas together. <clears throat> Chuck, Chuck stays in my house in Vegas quite a bit. Absolutely. And uh, Tonight. <clears throat> matter of fact, tonight he'll be there. Oh, and, nice. And he'll call me sometimes like, Bye bye. I, I went. And f he's the best house guest you've ever had in your entire life. One time he goes, "Hey, I noticed there was a leak in your backyard." <laughs> uh, so he he showed me the pipes. I was like, "Fuck, that's all messed up." He cut the pipe, fixed it, showed me it was brand new. My water bill went down to fifty dollars from two hundred fifty a month. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, dude. "Wow, that's incredible, right?" And then he goes, "Hey, bye bye. I noticed there was a the <laughs> wall in the back was separating, so I re-cemented it." Have you ever had somebody say they re? He goes, I didn't have anything to stir the cement with, so I used my hands to stir the cement, and he used his hands to slap the fucking cement on the wall. <laughs> Unbelievable. <I did>. <laughs> they hurt me for a week after that, man. It was so raw. Oh, my God. Like, oh. like not, not normal, like, you know, hey, I changed the light bulb for you. Like, really <laughs> fucking detailed things. And then, yeah, but here's the yeah. best part. He goes, hey, I hope you don't mind. I decorated a little bit inside the house. I put up some artwork, some paintings. I go, oh, cool. I walk in. There's this Elvis thing. I go, okay, that's Chuck. I get it. Then there's this Steve Reeves poster. I go, oh, I get it. That's, you know. And then I walk in and there's these fucking awful, like, fruit bowl paintings. It's like a, it's like a painting of a fruit bowl. It's like a hey, white for frame. free. What do you think? I, I got could it. tell. I could tell. But he put, it on, he put two of them in the fucking laundry room. Oh the laundry my room's God. smaller than the room we're in right now. It needed some color. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> fruit bowls. <laughs> and in his, in, his, in his dining room, there was a, there was a hole in there with a hook. I said, yeah. I got to put something up there. But yeah, the wall yeah. is all mirror. <laughs> so yeah. it's like a, it's another painting of like a fruit bowl. <laughs> oh my god! Where'd you get all these fruit bowls from? <laughs> they were free. I yeah. got it from Vinny from the restaurant. I was gonna say they look like old Italian stuff. Like you would see something in your fucking grandmother's house. <laughs> That's where I got it from. <laughs> That's fucking funny, dude. <laughs> you got any good art, Mike? No way. <laughs> Do you want a fruit bowl painting? No way. I got a connection. No way. I know a guy. No way. <laughs> hey, my dad just did that painting for you of you and Frank Bruno. You got yeah, that yeah, now. Yeah, I got that. Nice. When you spanked Frank Bruno. You spanked him I twice, didn't you? I like Frank. Frank's a good guy. Yeah. But, I, you know, it's funny. Is I was in England in 93 94 when when lennox fought frank bruno i was doing shows or something oh, i was 95 it was it must have been later anyway when i was there i was there i was at a pub watching lennox fight frank bruno and they're both british and this is how you knew that white people loved frank bruno like they viewed him as one of their own and they looked at lennox like an outsider because no shit in the middle of that fight, I heard a white guy behind me go, come on, Frankie, hit the black bastard. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wait, Frank is darker than fucking Lennox. What yeah. are you talking about? That's interesting. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. So tell me, what did your family say? We have to get him out of Mumbai. We got to get with my dad. was like, we must leave. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to end well. <laughs> were, were you born in India? No, I was born in Toronto. Okay, that's it. But would you ever go back? Yeah, I dig it. You been to India before? Yeah, I love it. I'll tell you, go with me, you'll dig it. Actually, you were there. You, you kind of you, Mike Tyson. I had a good time. Hey, there's <laughs> nothing I, I can show you that you weren't going to see without me. The orphanage and stuff. We had a good time in the orphanage. Right. Wow, it's crazy though, right? It's yeah, they had the biggest ghetto in Asia. I, I shot my series in there. Yeah, in that the in that it was called Dar Daravi. It was pretty awesome. The slum, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah pretty yeah. awesome. And I ate food in the slum at night when they opened the. Yeah. And I got at food. night they had no lights. You must have got sick. I like got a dog. sick like you couldn't. I was pissing out my ass for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, oh, that was really. Yeah, nasty. it looked like my my it looked like my ass had allergies. I was just running all day. <laughs> If my asshole could sniff, it would have. Oh, man. <laughs> Everyone who goes to India says they have that experience. It's no, easy I to... sure that wasn't going to happen to me. You didn't get sick? No. It's easy to avoid getting sick, but like I'm, I, you know, you, as an Indian kid, you're like, my ego's like, man, there's nothing gonna, here going to make me sick. Yeah. And then you realize, oh, yeah, no. Do I'm... you see all the cows in the street? Oh, yeah, all yeah. All the cows and the baboons? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
You you gotta watch my you gotta watch my old act now. You're gonna really dig it now that you've seen oh, it. Oh man, <laughs> all the baboons in the street fucking with you. Oh yeah, yeah. They're aggressive. They're not yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll slap the shit out your hand. Oh yeah, snatch yeah. your food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll even steal a purse. <laughs> <laughs> a baboon. I saw a grown two grown ones and like three babies following them in the middle of the street downtown. Right. Did people bother you at all? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, because yeah, everybody knows who you are there. Absolutely. And wow. they don't even speak English, they're calling your name. It was really crazy. It was a really experience I needed. I went to the Taj Mahal. It was pretty awesome. That was pretty cool. Did you get a tour? I would imagine you had a tour yeah. guide so that you didn't know. No, too many people. I couldn't deal with the heat. It was too many people. Oh, yeah, it's a little warm. What was the temp while you were there? 100 and 100. Over 100? And, and, and all humidity. Oh. Oh, yeah. Brutal. It's killing you. It, who went with you? I me, mean, my wife, and who else? Just me and her went. Did Kiki like it? She loved it. Yeah? Did you like the food? Did you eat in the hotels? We, we ate in the hotel. We were going to eat outside. Bomb-ass food, though, right? Yes. That's all we eat. We, any, any country we go to, that's where we say we go to the train, I mean, the Indian store. Oh, yeah. Indian food, man. <laughs> Never let you down. I got to get my moms to cook for you. Especially with one, with number one spice. Curry? Yeah. Number one, man. That's yeah. what I could deal with. Good for you, man. All those Ayurvedic herbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Good well, for make the digestion. It also make you fat as shit. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Because well, yeah. they put a lot of oil and butter. Uh, like pure butter. Especially naan bread. Forget mm. it. Oh, yeah. Butter naan. naan. Yeah, it's good. Garlic naan. Forget it. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> forget <clears throat> it. And you get the butter chicken or whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, over. Forget it. Russell, would you say you had a forget traditional... Indian family upbringing? 100% no. Really? Not even close. <laughs> my dad's name is Eric Reginald Peters. Oh, really? And my mom is Maureen Christina. You know, so, and, and I hung around black kids from the age of four. That's okay. all I knew were black people. So, so you know, <clears throat> they kept you in the hood, man. Yeah, that's why I was like, well, this is what I know. The white yeah. kids weren't nice. I mean, there was no Indian people around me. So I was like, wow. Well, this is what I know. So that's why I'm so comfortable when I'm around. Black people. That's my, that's my first choice. And then Chuck is my second. Okay. <laughs> nice. Oh, thank you, buddy. I love that. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, who, Mike, who was that one fighter? I'm always asking people. I, he kind of looked like Darren. Was it Darren Van Horn, maybe? Who had like a twitch. And when he was fighting, he would always throw his hand over his shoulder. Who the hell was that? <clears throat> Do you know what I'm talking about? Man, quite a few fighters did that. No, but there was, he, <laughs> he had like a twitch. He was like, and he was a white kid. And he was always like, and right before he threw a punch, he would... He just throw it over his shoulder. I was like, what was that? Interesting. <laughs> I think it might have been Darren Van Horn, if I'm not mistaken. But it was like a white guy like that in like the early 90s, late 80s. Wasn't Pete? No. <laughs> put, 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 put. <laughs> Chuck's the best because he'll be like, Bubba, come on. I got to, we're going to the fight. And we, get, we get to the fight. Or no, I'll go, hey, I got tickets. And I, Chuck, come with me. So Chuck and I go to the fight. And he goes, these are the fucking tickets they gave you. <laughs> it's like seven through. He goes, this is fucking bullshit. And they don't fucking like you, do they? I go, I check. What am I going to complain? They gave me free tickets. Nah, fuck that. We're moving up. Yeah. And, and we end up really we, did it. we practically end up in the guy's corner. Yeah. Hey, Baba, hold the spit bucket. He needs some. <laughs> <laughs> like, give me the Vaseline. Let me put it over his eyes. We did move up. Right? right? Yeah, we've done that. Every time I go with Chuck, we move up to a better seat. Nobody says anything. Yeah, nobody's gonna say anything. I mean, it's so funny when you walk with Chuck. It, it, Chuck is like a, you know, he's a street celebrity. So yeah. I see cops like, "Hello, Mr. Zito." I'm like, "That was a cop talking to you like that." <laughs> I'm like, "Aren't you? Aren't you?" I, I expect the cops to be like, "Hey, you fucking son of a bitch, let me," you know. But they're like, they're mad respectful. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I mean, he's definitely earned it. I think. Yeah, your mood really changes when you get punched in the face. I don't yeah. know if you know this, Evan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it really like you go and you're feeling great, and then you get hit, and you're like, "Fuck! What did I do to this guy? What happened? Yeah, what happened here? Yeah, I know. That was that was one of my first Golden Gloves fight. I fought this stocky black kid. I mean, the kid was really buffed and everything. He came out. He came out like a Bojack style. Henry Armstrong mm -hmm. hit me an overhand right on top of the temple. I backed up, and I said to myself. What the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> that was the first time I got hit in the ring, too. It was the same oh, shit. Like, what what am I doing you know? here? I, but I wound up knocking him out the second round, so <laughs> it, it was worth getting out. hit. But I, then that second, I said, what the fuck am I doing here? I believe it, The man. first time I got hit in the ring, I was sparring with guys that I knew. And I was like, what the fuck I do to you? <laughs> I'm like, what are you mad at? I didn't yeah, do what shit to you. What's going on? Like, boom. Yeah, you're like, and, and, and you know, the thing is, you don't get a headache till the next day. 
Right. So it sucks. It's like your pain is on layaway. Yeah. Boom, yeah. Boom. yeah. Yeah. For the sure. next day you Unless feel like you a bag of shit. Mike. Well, no, then you go to <laughs> then sleep. Then time you wake up, then yeah. you get the headache. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Uh, well. Um, Look at Evan driving this thing. I like this. Yeah, man. Oh, nice. Just driving this That's shit. Good. I like this. Hey, um, I got questions for you, Michael. You are a Brooklyn cat. Yes, I am. Do you remember, okay, do you remember a cat named Rap? Gangster guy, Rap, when you were growing up. Rap, um, he used to run with uh, the real 50 Cent. Well, I knew those guys back then, um, Daryl and 50 and those guys. Yeah, so you must have known Rap. Rap just got out from doing 32 years. Wow. <laughs> that was a thing, man. I know. Yeah. Rap's my people, so he's going to be in town in a couple of weeks, <laughs> staying at the crib. <laughs> That's crazy. I have some friends waiting to come out there. They did 25 years. It's insane, right? Out. Yeah, I just don't understand this. They they still cool. Yeah, they. I don't know how they didn't get crazy in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you and gotta have some PTSD the, coming out of there. Yeah, I mean, wrapped it for fourteen years in the hole. <sighs> fourteen years in the hole. I mean, Imagine he these was, guys that wasn't behaving yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't get along. He didn't play well with others. Imagine uh, these guys do 30, 40 years. They come out. There's cell phones. There's this. There's that. I mean, oh, yeah. you yeah. got to really adjust, man. Yeah. Whoa. What yeah. was your longest stretch, Chuck? Oh, I just did six years. That was nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Six it was years. something, but hey, I couldn't do six hours. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> Holy shit. And that's six just years, processing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I started four months in a Japanese prison. So you did Whoa. 10. Uh, oh, well, you did six years, 10, four months. <laughs> yeah, the Japanese one. I remember reading that in your book. Yeah. <clears throat> what was that but like? It was, I mean, I was locked down 23 hours a day. I, I was in my a cell. Oh, really? That was probably a third of this room. They keep you away from the popu- you know, population because I was American and uh, I was locked down 23 hours a day in a little cell, a little six by eight foot cell. So... Why do they keep you away? I guess because He's I was American than the rest and, of them. And, and I was uh, <laughs> I was there waiting to get extradited, and uh, they and he just might wanted... have influence over people. Oh, oh. yeah, that's yeah, true. He might have influence over people. But people say, "Yeah, that was a guy's a little man." They had some big sumo-looking guys. Uh, what do you call it? As guards. Yeah. Oh really? Oh yeah. Yeah, they weren't just little uh, five foot three guys. What, about those big guys? what if you decide that you want to become a sumo wrestler and you go and get that size and find out you're no good at it? <laughs> Man, I mean, some of those guys are 400 pounds. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. They're considered gods over there, though. <clears throat> yeah. Godzilla. Yeah, they, they have to have, have, to have um, um, boy, um, store boys to hold their butt, to wipe their butts. Oh, really? Oh, God. Yeah. Really? Man, they need, that's why they invented those Japanese toilets. Stall boys. Yeah, really. I found that out. When I went over there and met them and stuff. They got what? They, Store boy. Why don't they just have a they hose? Because they can't wipe their ass, so they need somebody <laughs> to wipe their ass for them. <laughs> they need two guys to separate Get it. The fuck out of and here. And one guy to hose it down. Stall boys and sumo wrestling? <laughs> yeah, serious. Look it up. <laughs> and they wear that up, thong, dude. right? So you can't have a dirty ass with that thong. Stall That's boys. Crazy. That's sumo. crazy. God. And some dudes just dying for that job. Oh, man, no, they, they are. They are dying for that job. I'm sure. They're like, God, you sick. Ain't, ain't that, <laughs> They're dying for that job. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> for sure. That's a shitty job. It's not. Yeah. That job. Pun intended. Yeah. That job. That, that, that. The guy's 400, I can't find 500 it. pounds. They can't squat and, you know what I mean? Well, it's yeah, yeah it's not to think about it. I mean, yeah. your your arms ain't long enough. But that's why <laughs> oh, they inv- probably invented the Japanese toilet for that reason alone. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have one. Yeah, I, you know. What's that? The you, toilet. The <laughs> toilet. That shoots the it? water in your. It's the oh, best yeah, thing yeah. in the world, dude. Oh my god. Oh, the bidet. The, no. Yeah, I use a bidet or the Japanese toilet. The Japanese toilet. I know, but still, man, god damn. Yeah, it's heated, <laughs> heated seats. It's hot and warm. Yeah, yeah, you can adjust it <laughs> nice. to how you feel. Yeah. All right. The water temperature, the pressure, the, the angle. <laughs> If it's not hitting your hoop directly, you know what I mean? It's, it's all good. I haven't used Let me tell you something. Let me just ask you this. Are you, are you, do you use it when you go to the house? 
Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Mic giver, what are you, a wiper? I used to be from a wiper. Though. Nah, oh. son. You can't do that. I like, I like, I like, the, I like the, the white. Nah, black. Let me tell the you, white. B. Um, <laughs> nah, you a wiper? Let me, okay, let me ask you well, this. Well, I mean, what else am I supposed to do? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If you got if shit. you don't have a bidet. <laughs> listen to me. If you got shit, like a tiny piece of shit on your finger, right? Would you wipe it off or would you wash your hands? You'd wash your hands. Yeah. Right. So when you get a chunk of shit fall out your ass, why do you think it's a good idea to paint your ass with all that shit? Because all you do is you keep wiping yes. until the toilet paper looks clean, but it ain't clean. All you did was spread the shit so thin it ain't showing up no more. Well, we are one of the only countries in the world who does that. I know. That's why you got to watch. Let me tell you. Hey, li- I'm with it. I the just liberation don't have of a, a clean asshole. That can do that. <laughs> Is amazing. With that capability. My asshole's so clean at all times that when, I, when I'm looking at my underwear, I'm like, I have to smell it, and it still smells like the detergent. I'm like, I'm good. Nice. Cool. That's good, I'm man. not bragging, guys, but I'm letting you know. I it's just some laundry underwear. time. Jesus, Michael. No underwear. We That's went to good, fights man. to this talking. What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck, dude? I'm just saying. I'm trying to steer us around the clock here. <laughs> no, dude. I mean, it's good stuff. I didn't know that. I didn't know. Oh, yeah, tr- trust me. Or just get a bidet. It's fine. I'm down with that. Yeah, yeah, I tried that before. Yeah, yeah, you try that. You shoot it up the hoop. It's all good to go. Yeah. It's really uh, clean. If not, just get the $10,000 toilet he has. No, that's not 10. So you can get them for now like $1,000. Oh, that's all. I'm, you guys want, I'll buy you guys each one. I Thank sure. You. Thank love you. that. Yeah. Consider, love consider, your, consider your assholes clean from me. And I mean <laughs> that. No, consider me your Indian stall boy. <laughs> oh, my God. That's still tripping me out, dude. Are you sure? Anyway, beyond the, let's get past the stall boys. <laughs> I went from New Delhi to um, New Belly. New stall to boys. New Delhi, yeah, to, yeah, stall boys. <laughs> then I went to Dubai from New Delhi. Did you fly Emirates? Yeah. Emirates First, right? Here. Yeah, it's thank the best, God, isn't thank it? Thank God, yeah. Close that door and you go to sleep. <sighs> did you put the pajamas on? No. Oh. My wife did, though. I do every time. Let me tell you something. I get on that plane. I go in that bathroom. I get buck ass naked. I free ball the whole flight. Ooh, oh, it's good. That's when you have just a whole suite. <laughs> you have the suite. The door closes. Bitch, oh, I'm you're good. good to go. That's looking the way to the go. Movies, looking at all the oh, crazy yeah. movies. That's movies, sweet. flat bed, nice pillow, nice blanket. They put a little, little uh, like a pad on the on the on the chair, so you got to go the mattress. That's the way to fly. Dude. Oh, it's good shit. Hell yeah. You take a shower on the plane? Yes. It's great shit, right? Awesome, yeah. And you take know, take a shower, shower? Too on a plane? There's a shower on the plane, This yeah. is a commercial f- yeah, private. Yeah. First class on uh, Emirates. Whoa. You book your shower time, you get five minutes, and if there's nobody else taking a shower the, and you tell me, them, yeah. they'll give you an- another five. <clears throat> Chuck, we got to do that, man. I stayed in the way take a shower was in there. Yeah, it's great, and, and it's nice. It's, a, it's, it's wonderful. Pretty nice, awesome. nice. Well, I fly economy class. I don't know what that is, man. Coach. South, Southwest has something like that. <laughs> Back in coach with the peasants. I don't know if you could ever fly coach. You're six foot how much? <sighs> six, six, man. Yeah, you can't Flying sit coach, coach is brutal. No, you can't sit and coach it's at horrible. six foot six. My knees are in my chest. Yeah, I don't even know why you even attempt it. It sucks. And I then saw the- a picture of Andre the Giant in first class. He had to have both seats. Yeah. Even and that's when first. first class wasn't even good back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Man, now it's good. He'd have to go Singapore Airlines because the, the, the wide-ass seats on Singapore Airlines are actually yeah. uncomfortable for a long flight. Really? Yeah, because they're too wide. There's nowhere you have to pick you a side lean. to lean on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Literally, like, you and I could both sit in that chair together. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that could be nice for a minute. Yeah, I mean, you know. it was a great experience for me. India? How long did you go for? I was there for at least two days. Did, how were the fights? Fights were great. Yeah? That's awesome. Was there any Indian cats fighting? Yeah, the Indian fighting the Dubai, um, cats from Dubai. And who won? Indian. Yeah, son. Yeah, son. <laughs> son? <laughs> Let him know, son. Let Represent. him know. Represent. Came representing. That's right. Hell yeah. Yeah. Mumbai. Yeah, we hit it right on the dot. Pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they did. They gave me a dot deal. Oh, as you get to the hotel, right? Yeah, they gave me the dot. And the, and cool. the lay around your neck? Yeah. Everything like Hawaiian thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the dot. And uh, nice. some, then some sweet. Yeah. They give something sweet to eat when you walk in. What hotel yeah. were you at? I'm pleased the hell out of me, man. The Taj. The Taj um, Lands End. Yeah, Lands End. Yeah. That's the one I usually stay yeah, at. Yeah, that's it. That's, a that's good my hotel. shit. Yeah. The nice. Oh yeah. Great hotel. 
Yeah, you go to a five star hotel in India, it's another world. Yeah, they have the butlers. Oh, it's really, oh man, you get spoiled. Oh, yeah. Tiger in the room. Oh, shit. Mike's already had that. (laughs) I stayed at the Taj myself. Yeah. Atlantic City. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The Trump Taj. (laughs) Trump Taj. If you're in New York, I stay at that uh, chat wall. That's a good hotel. Where's the one from across street from my friend's place? Yeah, yeah, it's great. The fucking rooms are soundproof. So you don't, it's right in Times Square and you don't hear. A single sound oh, in your room. That's awesome. And they got the Japanese toilets. Two wins. Really? <laughs> yeah. Two wins. Clean asshole and no noise. Hey, two good things. You need that uh, soundproof room. Where, in my house? Yeah, with your girl and all. Whoa, screamers. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're working on it. I'm Russ, working do you on smoke it. weed? No, I don't. <clears throat> no? I can't. You know what it is? I... I need somebody to guide me through it to get okay. me to the place I need to be at. I like a drunk high, so what can get me in that zone? Okay. So you need maybe something with a little more CBD. Oh, you know what? I just had that for the first time the other night. The oil? Yeah. Because oh, I know. can't sleep. Oh, oh, really? And Pete has that. So yeah. he gave me some. I love that. You know? Put it on my tongue and... Phew. Well, Pete's all into the plant medicines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I had a good talk with him about that. That's awesome, Chuck. CBD is great. That. I tried that. And I slept. Slept through the I night? Slept. Yeah, well, you don't sleep at all. Because I'm okay. a very hour. You are. But at least I, I it went half the, half the night. That's good, man. So. Felt better next day? Yeah, it relaxes you. Yeah. It relaxes you. It does relax you. It's great for stress relief, great for anxiety, great for sleep. Because yeah, I put my head down, but my mind goes a thousand miles an hour. Oh, really? yeah. Every night. Yeah, you sleep like three hours at least, at the most. At the most. Like, you need the those most. anxiety pills. <clears throat> really? Most, yeah. Do you ever meditate? No. No? Your training so, is your meditation. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, uh, I just got too much energy or something. I, I don't sleep. Yeah. I'm up every hour. And then between those three hours, I'm up every hour. Yeah, that's no yeah. good. And you also have a breathing thing, right? Yeah. 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 I got the breathing thing too. So the sleep apnea. <clears throat> no, the uh, broken nose shit. Uh, yeah. yeah, that'll make it. Glad tough that to sleep breathe. apnea too stuff, man. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it is. But what are you gonna do? Now you sleep good though, huh? I do. I You're sleep. Young. I'm up. Uh, I'm up a couple times a night, but uh, you know, for the most part, weed really, cannabis really helps me sleep. Um, you know, exercise is great to help you sleep. You guys all do that. Yeah, it didn't Meditation. <laughs> I wake up. Like, once I wake up, I wake up, like, to take a piss at, like, 6, and then I'm, like, not back asleep till 7.30. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm, like, should I just crank one out and go to sleep? And then... Yeah. I get up and start light one up. So when I can't sleep, it's light one up, and it's all on a wrap. You hit the, <laughs> you hit the uh, pen when you're in the house, or you hit the... I hit the joint. Oh. Right? Yeah. The jizz on the jizzoint. The jizzoint. <clears throat> you sleep good, Mike? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Up all the time? All the time. Yeah. Oh, I'm like that. You know who's going to go to sleep. sleep right now? The people listening to this fucking podcast. No way. <laughs> Wake up. No way, man. <laughs> no, I mean, weed, if you're interested, Russ. And I also don't like the coughing part, so would I be better off with a pen? Yeah, or no, not necessarily, because some people say, you know, vaping can give you more of a cough than smoking. Really? Because it's got, have you heard of this yeah, popcorn lung? Good. There's some good ones, vapors. Yeah, there's some good stuff out there, but good vapors out there. I would say get yourself a tincture. A little, that sounds like you know, something illegal. A so, CBD sounds like a teenager. oil, like what Chuck took. Oh, really? Yeah. It's an oil. Would you rub it, it on you? <clears throat> no, no, it's, it comes in an injectable, uh, what if, uh, like syringe. A syringe, but it's a thick thing. Yeah, and you put it on, and you put a little on your finger, and you put it on your yeah, your that's tongue. it. That's on it. your tongue. Yeah, what it tastes like? It tastes like you swallowed a joint. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it works. Like, How soon did it work? It takes about an hour. No, see, so you got to take it. You know, an hour before you go. Yeah, for sure. All right. You'll watch TV, and before you know it, I was like, shut the TV. And, and you I was slept out. solid. Uh, yeah, for for, for uh, you. Yeah, for for me. Yeah. yeah. A lot better than I did. Yeah, that's great. I need to try that then. You should. So man. it's a All thick. Right. It's a thick. Uh, Where can we like get this marijuana from? It's like a. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could get it from this great establishment here. 
I know. I have tons of it in the house. You Actually, do? I came to re-up. It's why I came. <laughs> this morning, my shoulder was hurting. Yeah, and then literally, have, I was like, fuck, I need that roll-on from Mike's you don't place. Need the, uh, you don't have yeah. the oil. No, we don't have the oil yet. We're going to have it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, so, people who don't smoke like myself. Yeah. and You don't I'm, smoke, right? No. No. You so know that. You put the oil. Or maybe a little uh, heroin, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. That's yeah. nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing. So, uh, I went to one day, I went to um, Russell Peters' house and he had this big machine gun coming out of the wall. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, would that deter people from fucking with you? Yeah, that's what, that, was my, uh, <laughs> that was my intimidation method. Yeah, that was, yeah it worked real well. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty I, I, Mike, Mike came to the house and I put him on the turntables. Oh, I love that. That's trying to make Mike DJ. He goes, must yeah. have been He was like, yo, fun. I always wanted to learn how to do this. I go, I'll teach you if you want. You'd love it. You know why, Mike? You could zone out and just fucking play music. Make some money, that. too. Yeah, yeah. Shit, you became a celebrity DJ? Oh, my God. You'd be making money out of that. Oh, ass. forget it. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. <laughs> Mike Tyson knocking out the hits <laughs> this weekend. This weekend. <laughs> Dude, that would be amazing. We'll add that to the Tyson Entertainment branch. That would branch. be wonderful. Yeah, have Mike come DJ your birthday. Now, what do they give? What do they give DJs? A good DJ for the night. No, no. Here's what. Listen. Here's the difference now. Okay. Is a good DJ doesn't get good money. It's these bullshit artists that get the fucking big money. Okay. Well, Mm. what do they get? The bullshit artists. The bullshit artists will get anywhere from a hundred thousand to half a million a night. Get out of here. Yeah. Chuck, serious Chuck. That's crazy. Playing anymore. And like real, (laughs) real talented guys who know how to fucking DJ and rock a party and change up the style or whatever. They'll be lucky if they get a thousand bucks. Oh, so if you don't know what you're doing, you get more. Yeah, if you look good and you know how to do fucking jumping jacks in front of a pair of CD players, um, yeah, you're gonna make a lot of money. Uh, so I gotta get a record player. What do you? And getting? now there's that kid Marshmallow <laughs> Head or whatever the fuck he's called. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm making a lot of money now. Who's yeah. your favorite DJ? I mean, I, I'm into real DJs, so okay. you know, you're not gonna know them. But I mean, Jazzy Jeff is, okay. is one of them. He's a, he's a ridiculously talented. So Jazzy Jeff, DJ Spinbad, uh, starting from scratch. Um, shit, there's so many guys. Uh, scratch Bastard. You know, I knew Big Al. You knew Big Al? I never knew Big Al. You knew Big Al. Lord Finesse is one of my best friends. Yeah. And Lord Finesse and Big Al were like, you know, they, yeah. were, they were in the same crew. Big Al was a small guy. Yeah, he was a small dude. Yeah, small guy talked big. He was dope, though, right? <laughs> he talked big. He was dope. The shit he would say. You was never shit. Your mother should have swallowed you. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Ask Jeez. Beavis. I get nothing but head. You know. <laughs> hey, Mike. You know what I'm gonna ask you? You used to have all that Dapper Dan shit back in the day, right? Yeah. And now he's designing for Gucci, like Isn't on the it real. Real? Isn't yeah. That wild, right? That's crazy. And his stuff is like kind of dope. I got a Dapper Dan Gucci T-shirt. Ooh. But it's hard to find. You gotta. But he's still making stuff. Like you can go to him and yeah, that's and so get awesome. stuff. That's you, ever want, cool. you never want to go back and get some more Dapper Dan shit? No, nah, but I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I'll get you measured up. I'll make a call. Right, I'll go see Dapper. <clears throat> oh, that's the one in Harlem. Wait, yeah, but he, tell him, Mike, Dapper Dan? Mike, tell him how you used that's to have to get are. it. Because it wasn't like you could just walk in and get it. You had to like go to three locations or some no, shit. You have to go. Um, this is how I went to get it. You go to the shop that he told me to go to. You talk to the African guy. Mm-hmm. The guy takes your measurements and everything. Right. You give him the material that you want. And you, next thing you know, you come back at nighttime. It's ready. Oh, it was that fast? Yeah. Damn. How did it hold up? It held up pretty good. It looks good on you, though. Oh, yeah. Way, so it looks so good on you. Yeah, I remember seeing you with the, with the I think it was a MCM jacket and the MCM yeah, Tam. It was so cool. <laughs> it was so cool. That was at that Bedans where you uh, yeah. cracked uh, Mitch, Mitch Green. Green. Yeah. Right? Had to run into him. <laughs> yeah, out of all the people. Because I go there at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm drunk and stuff. I'm yeah. down there. Oh, man. <laughs> was he a Harlem guy, Mitch Green? Yeah. Oh, so he was in his hood. At he least. was a fucking tough guy at the day. Yeah. You know, crazy though. Yeah. Who's Had Mitch Green? I Mitch beat him Blood up. Green. I bit him and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mike broke his hand hitting him outside yeah. Dapper Dan. Really? Yeah. yeah, this guy was a real bully. I had to fight him too. He's a professional fighter, but this guy was on angel dust all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Mike fought him to a ten round decision. He couldn't knock him out. This yeah. guy was not going anywhere. <laughs> and he kept calling Mike Michelle Tyson when he would see him and like. It was 15 oh, rounds, wasn't it? No, it was 10. No, it was, oh, it was, a, it was, it was a non-title. Oh, it was non-title. Yeah, it was like somewhere in between James Quick Tillis and... And then, then he and, tore me out, and then he was fucking with me, and he called me Michelle Tyson. Oh, yeah. my <laughs> God. <I> <laughs> <him>. <laughs> you must have been How deep were you with, uh, yes. when you rolled up when, when we saw you? Oh, nobody, just me and someone else. Oh, that's good. Listen, um, 
when I hit him the last time and his head hit that concrete, right. I said, oh, shit. Right. <laughs> that's when I got scared. I said, yeah, oh, absolutely. shit. That's when he was out cold. I said, oh, shit. I took off then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got in the car. So I saw that head. thought he might be dead? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. He didn't move. And it's a boom. Yeah. Fuck. There, there was, uh, that's, dang, that's the dangerous thing in street fights. I remember I, yeah. I got into a fight in 92. I hit this kid. He's coming at me with just like, I was, it was on some like bullshit. And I, I was kind of a punk anyway, but I threw a, <laughs> I threw a, I threw a right hand first and he went back cause he was drunk. And when he was coming back up, I sidestepped and hit him with a left hook, but it hit him in the ear and then his ear started bleeding. Oh, I was like, shit. fuck. I killed him. But it was his <laughs> earring that ripped off. I thought it was his ear inside oh. bleeding. I was like, <laughs> but I'm, I don't know how I avoided charges. I, uh, he was a other DJ kid. And then I told him, all right, go to the record store. I'll set you up. I know the guy there. <laughs> That's how I got out of it. Whoa. And that was my payment back. I got you a discount at the record store. Yeah, we were yeah. talking about Chuck almost choking this dude out, bodyguarding Liza Minnelli. <laughs> oh, which was that the uh, SRV story? That's saw you know, this is the guy that had the uh, a camera when he pulled the camera out. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. I thought he was going for a gun. <laughs> you know. So they gave the guy first row tickets, front row seats. So he wouldn't get sued. You still talk to Liza at all? I, you <clears> know what? <throat> I, I haven't seen her or talked to her in a couple of years. You know, she lives right here in, uh, 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 off uh, Coldwater Canyon, oh, Hidden nice. Valley. Up oh, that's there. cool. Yeah. So I went to go see her up there. Been a while. You know. Been a long time. I mean, I was a widow when I was 24 years old. Yeah. And she was, it was a long you know, time ago, Chuck. Yeah. It was literally 40 years ago. 40, <laughs> yeah. 41 years ago. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, bring him up. <laughs> thank you. I'm Indian. You can't give me a math problem and expect me to is? ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. What are you, 48? I'm 48 now. Yeah, I thanks. called you for your you birthday. Did. You, steered, I you sure did. I called you for your birthday, man. Mike called me once for my birthday, and now I take this one as, a, as another one. I'll take that. That's really nice. I remember Mike called me for my birthday. He was like, hey, brother, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. Uh, I look forward to getting to know you better in the future. Peace and love, brother. And I said, thanks, Mike. That's a really <laughs> nice call. Yeah, and, then he, and, then he, and then it sounded like he handed the phone back and went, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Mike was like, who the fuck did I just say that to? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do for your birthday? I did two shows in... Uh, Arlington, Texas. Nice. Yeah, it was whatever it was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then they I was sing happy to... birthday to you? They did. I'm not a big fan of the song, you know. Yeah. And then they tried to bring out a cake. I was like, nah, I'll keep all that. It's a comedy show. I don't want to make it fucking weird. Yeah. I just yeah. want to make you laugh. Come on. And then I want to respect. Go home. Respect. Ah, I took it as the respect and I was like, ah, it's good. We got yeah. it. We did it. I was That's supposed cool. to fly back that night, private. And uh I got to the private airport and the fucking plane had a leak in the brake line. They go, We can't take off. I go, oh, fuck. I go, Well, you could take off, you just can't can't land that's really and what the problem is yeah. back. <laughs> taking off's not the issue stopping when we land is the issue so you were stuck there i was stuck there for a night for the night in Arlington. thank god i didn't check out of the hotel though i never check out i just leave just in case some shit happens and you need to get back there sure yeah and you kept the key yep of course there you go yeah. i always leave the key me too man <clears throat> there's no going back for me the key too there's yeah, just, no there's going a precautionary back. method i keep it with me just in case Bye-bye. What do you like to smoke, Eb? Weed. Yeah, I know, but what style? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I used to really like sativas. Mm -hmm. Those bring you up, right? Yeah, those are the uppers. But, uh, you know, lately some sativas have been giving me, making me a little too anxious. So I've been moving more towards hybrids. And yeah, there's indicas. the hybrid Tyson stuff that uh, I get, and uh, everybody seems to really enjoy that one. Yeah, it's a good it's one. It's right in the middle. The hybrid's really nice. Yeah. The T Ranch Hybrid is, is a good one, um, but I like you know I like to just do CBD too, you know just yeah, keep on the it, tongue. Yeah, just keep that helps with my anxiety. That helps keep my pain level low. What do you have pain with? Neck from football. Back, yeah, elbow, hands, hips. It's your whole fucking body. Yeah, just say your whole yeah. body. Yeah, my whole body. And you're too young to have all that <laughs> shit wrong with you. I know, right? You're 31. 30. 30, Jesus. 30. My pants are fucking 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. All right, I think we should wrap this up because it's going nowhere at this point. It's just getting weird. People are like, what the fuck is this podcast all about? It's getting there. It's, it's evolving. Yeah, you got, you got four very distinct personalities in here, and 
Eben seems to be the smart guy in the group, so we're gonna let him do the driving, <laughs> and uh, and I'll and I'll talk the dumb shit, and uh, Mike will chime in when he feels he it feels this is necessary. Compelled, and, uh, and it's chi- necessary. <laughs> it's necessary. No, it's awesome, Bye-bye. guys. Well, I appreciate you guys, man. It's great to hang out with you. I'm you excited too. for this. You really should answer your mom's phone call. I mean, she's calling right now. I, I'll, I think I'll it'd be pretty hilarious if you answer the call while we're on the air. I can't do that right now. I just want to hear what your mom says to you. Eben, you left the toilet unflushed. Where are you? <laughs> your mom's yeah. American? Yeah. Dad's American? Yeah. I'm the only non-American guy here. Yeah. yeah. Build that wall. <laughs> Build. <laughs> <laughs> we like you though. Oh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> we like that. you. Awesome. All right, guys. All right, this is us signing Until off. Till next time.